Welcome to worship. My name is Teresa Pearson and I am delighted that you are joining me for this worship experience today. Let us worship the God who always welcomes us and let us open our hearts to Christ who welcomed friend and stranger alike. And now as we enter this time of worship together, let us center our hearts and our minds as we join together in the hymn, Open My Eyes That I May See. moment of worship, we lift up our cares and concerns, our joys and our sorrows. Touch our hearts and heal us, Lord. Make us ready to become your faithful disciples. Lord, you know our hearts. We want to extend the hand of welcome and friendship to all we meet, but you know that sometimes we shy away from reaching out. We make judgments about others based on their appearance and other surface factors and we neglect your mandate to be a welcoming presence. That lack of welcome extends further when we see needs that must be addressed and choose to turn our backs. We turn away from the pain and suffering protecting our own lives. Yet you remind us that as we welcome others, so we are also welcoming you. Heal us and give us strength and courage to always be welcoming others in your name. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we join our voices together in the Lord's Prayer saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For the past few weeks, we have been journeying through a particular passage in the Gospel of Matthew, starting at the end of chapter 9 and culminating with these verses at the end of chapter 10 today. We have talked about Jesus calling the 12 disciples and sending them out to gather the lost, to be the church that truly sees the crowd. Last week, we talked about what it means to claim our faith in the daylight as we witness to the world. And today, we focus on hospitality as we hear these words from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly, I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. Here is the reading of our Holy Gospel. Welcome. We use the word every day in a variety of contexts and situations. Sometimes as a greeting, 
and other times as a response, much like when someone says thank you and we say you're welcome. In the scripture I just read, the word welcome appears six times in just two verses. Wikipedia says that a welcome is a kind of greeting designed to introduce a person to a new place or situation and to make them feel at ease. The term can similarly be used to describe the feeling of being accepted on the part of a new person. In some contexts, a welcome is extended to a stranger, to an area, or a household. Does anyone else remember when the welcome wagon lady used to show up at your door after you moved to a new town? I remember when we first moved to Brookings back in the mid 90s and a very friendly welcome lady came to our apartment with a gift basket filled with info about the town and gifts and coupons from local merchants. The official welcome wagon fizzled out of most communities by the end of the 90s, but we still do things within the community to welcome new people, don't we? My family has first-hand experience of this as we just moved to town a month ago. And it was wonderful to have people from the congregation stop by with delicious desserts and vegetables, beautiful plants and flowers, and gift cards to local restaurants. Folks have sent cards, messages, and texts, all of which have made us feel very welcome. I am very thankful for the gracious welcome here. And this helps me realize that being the new pastor comes with a lot of perks. But then I began to wonder about the people that move to a new community, people that don't enjoy the same perks. My daughter and her husband just moved several states away to a new community where they don't know a single soul. How are they being welcomed? Are they being welcomed? As a new person, it can be hard to plug in to the life and rhythm of a new community, especially when you're not familiar with the local customs. The same can be said of communities of faith. Churches strive to be welcoming places and boldly declare that all are welcome, but that's not always the vibe we give to visitors. You've probably heard a story similar to this one that was shared with me. A new doctor moved to town with his wife and young family and they began church shopping, checking out the local churches one by one. After worshiping with a few congregations, they found a church that felt right. They liked the traditional feel of the sanctuary and found the service to be inspiring with a great sermon and beautiful music. People greeted them with handshakes and words of welcome after the service, but then they encountered someone that uttered that dreadful phrase, you're in my pew. The couple was taken aback. How do you respond to that? What originally felt like a warm, welcoming church suddenly became an awkward and uncomfortable place to be. Similarly, my 95-year-old grandmother recently told me her story of church shopping after moving to a new community. She had just gotten settled into the pew during the organ prelude before worship and someone tapped her on the shoulder asking her to move. You're sitting in my pew. Before the service had even started, my grandma got up and left the church and never went back. We'd like to think that these are isolated incidents, but these stories are more common than we'd care to admit. Our United Methodist slogan is open minds, open hearts, open doors. But is that always true? Are we actually living out our slogan in daily life? I'm guessing that most of you have your spot in the sanctuary, that place you always sit. And right now, if you close your eyes and concentrate, you can probably picture where most of the other regular attenders sit as well. I get it. It's human nature. We all have our spots. In fact, at my house, we all have our spot at the dinner table and we all have our spots on the couch. It's comforting to sit in your spot. But when we invite a guest into our home, 
We want to give them the best spot. And so we give up our usual comfortable spot to make our guests feel welcome. Anyone who welcomes you, welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. COVID-19 has changed the way we gather and the way we worship. We now have an online worship community and we are gathering outside for the time being. We can choose to look at this time negatively as an annoyance that prevents us from doing our normal routine. Or we can choose to look at it as an opportunity, an opportunity to press the reset button, an opportunity to reinvent ourselves, an opportunity to refresh and reshape our worship, an opportunity to give up our spot and provide hospitality for someone new. When you are preparing for visitors in your home, what do you do? I start with a deep clean of the house, arranging furniture so it's inviting and comfortable for guests. Maybe you put out the nice dishes and you get out those soft, fluffy towels to make your guests feel pampered. In our house, we like to prepare special foods and treats for our guests. We spend a lot of time planning and preparing so that our guests feel cared for as we try to anticipate all their needs. Do we provide that kind of hospitality in the church? Are we prepared to welcome guests and visitors? The United Methodist Communication website says that there are five different types of guests or visitors. Dissatisfied. Dissatisfied visitors are looking for a better church. Either yours has what they're looking for or it doesn't. Their decision about returning will be based on those criteria. Invited. Invited visitors come at the request of someone they know. They may not be looking for a church, but they may find a reason to return and stay. Seekers. Seekers want something spiritual. They look for real people with genuine smiles. They want authentic answers to their questions. Skippers. Skippers jump from church to church. Some like to meet people or network. Others are transient, moving on when something just doesn't suit them. And sometimes people's jobs call for continual travel. And finally, deep rooted. Deep rooted visitors are active in their church and looking for a place to settle in for the long haul. When they move into a community, they are usually ready to serve. And along with these types of visitors or guests, there are three different types of welcoming churches. Stationary. Stationary churches say, you are welcome to join us. If newcomers fit the existing culture, they become members. And if not, they usually leave. Medley. Medley churches welcome diversity because they know they should. This model looks and sounds beautiful. However, if the church does not welcome the rituals of different ethnicities and nationalities, eventually visitors will look for the exit sign. Transformer. Transformer churches welcome all newcomers along with their unique gifts from God. They like new ideas, advocate for people, and aren't afraid to change the culture and their community. So what type of church are we? I think it's important to know our identity as a local church and how we fit into the larger community around us. As I read the mission statements from each church, Riverview and Virgil, it's clear that you want to welcome people into your church family so that you can care for and nurture each other as we grow together in our faith. But I want us to think about how we are doing this, how we are putting this into action. We need to really look at how we welcome people, whether it's in person or online. Hospitality is not an add-on or something extra that you do if you have time. Hospitality is at the core of ministry. A phrase often attributed to Maya Angelou speaks to this. I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. 
we can provide beautiful music and prayers. And I could knock the sermon out of the park. But if you and I do not reach out to the least and the lost and make them feel truly welcomed into our church family, then we are missing the point. Jesus said, anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. Are you ready to give a cup of cold water to someone in need? Are you ready to welcome someone new to your pew? I shared two You're in My Pew stories earlier, and I'd like to close with a story from a different perspective. Marissa came to church today, having never been here before. It had been a long time since she had even darkened the doorway of any church. Lots of things had happened in her life. Some good, far too many bad. She had made choices that were self-destructive. And now, here she was, at the door of the church, not knowing if the roof would cave in because of her lack of presence in this holy place. That was the excuse she had used so many times before. The roof will cave in if I come. It's been too long. I only have Sunday to rest, so I can't attend church. I mean, what would happen? This was crazy. The doors were open. A little way inside, there stood an older woman, impeccably dressed, wearing a nice little hat and white gloves. Good morning, the woman said, extended tentative, extending tentatively the white gloved hand. Marissa reached out to shake the hand, but only the gloved fingertips were offered. With a slight shake of the hand, then quick withdrawal of the welcoming gesture completely. The woman seemed in a hurry to greet others, although there were no others in line waiting to be greeted. Marissa looked around and saw the directions to the sanctuary. There were others there talking animatedly. She moved toward those people whose conversation took a sudden turn. They stopped talking and seemed to look at her briefly and then look away. She was a stranger to them. They were involved with their friends. Someone else will greet this stranger. Taking a seat near the back of the church, Marissa looked around. Everywhere, people greeted one another, obviously knowing one another. She felt awkward. What should she do? The worship service began with wonderful music and words of welcome from the pastor. Then the pastor suggested that everyone take a moment to greet one another with the love of Christ. This was going to be awkward, thought Marissa. She stood up as the movement of the people around the sanctuary began. Suddenly, she felt a tapping on her leg and looking down, saw a small child. Hi, said the small child. Hi, replied Marissa. Who are you? asked the child. I'm Marissa, who are you? Timmy, just Timmy. I'm glad to meet you, Timmy. Are you new here? inquired Timmy. Yes, it's my first time coming. I'm not new, I've been here a long time. I get to say hi to people and it's my favorite thing to do. You do it very well, Timmy. Thanks for greeting me. You're welcome, I'm glad you're here. And he scampered off. Marissa didn't remember being greeted by others although she probably was. Timmy's innocent, warm welcome stayed in her heart. Whoever welcomes one of these, the least and the lost, welcomes me, said the pastor. Welcome to the house of the Lord. White glove and tentative welcome receded in her memory and was replaced by the genuineness of a small child. Thanks be to God for the hospitality of God given through this small child. Would you pray with me? God of all, we confess to you that we have not always reached out to the little ones of our world in the ways we should. 
We confess that we have not followed in your disciples' footsteps by sharing the good news with others as we should. We confess that we have left too many out in the cold and have not welcomed them as we should. Holy God, we repent of these errors and pledge to do better with the help of the Holy Spirit. We pledge to make our lives reflect the gospel of the risen Christ. Amen. And as we ponder these thoughts, let us join our voices together in the beautiful hymn, Yesu, Yesu. For the benediction. God of welcome and grace, lead us to follow you more closely. Empower us to be the disciples you call us to be. Send us out to bring comfort and aid to those who are alone. Guide us to the little ones who need your love. All this in your name. Amen. <laughs>